¿Cómo dejamos que la cultura del descarte, en la que millones de hombres y mujeres no valen nada frente a los beneficios económicos, cómo dejamos que esta cultura domine nuestras vidas, nuestras ciudades, nuestro modo de vivir? Se nos va a endurecer el cuello de tanto mirar al otro lado para no ver esta situación. Por favor, dejemos de hacer invisibles a los que están al margen de la sociedad. Ya sea por motivos de pobreza, de independencia, enfermedades psíquicas o minusvalías. Centremos en la acogida, en acoger a todas las personas que nos necesitan. La cultura de la acogida, de recibir, de dar techo, de dar hogar, de dar amor, de dar calidez humana. Oremos para que las personas que viven al margen de la sociedad, en condiciones de vida infrahumanas, no sean olvidadas por las instituciones y nunca sean descartadas. Brothers and sisters, our very loyal uh, audience of Capuchin Television, uh, your first Kenyan Catholic uh, channel that is rooted to evangelization through broadcasting. Now we are coming to you live uh, from Queen of Apostles Ruaraka Catholic Parish in the Archdiocese of Nairobi. It is the sixth day, that is Wednesday, the sixth day of September, the very day that uh, God uh, deemed it right to take uh, a great gift that He had bestowed unto us that is uh, the servant of God Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga and we are gathered here uh, just to commemorate uh, his life and times and legacy and uh, most importantly because of the ongoing process uh, of beatification and canonization he is a man uh, who really epitomized so many virtues in our family some of them uh, you we have been having conversations previously uh, from family members from the steering committee members, from all those that knew him, and those who, uh, the, the very man who, is the only man who is standing, who accompanied the, uh, the late servant of God to Rome to receive the red hat when he was created cardinal. And right now I am joined by Sister Praxides Nafula, who is the director of Pauline's Publications Africa. Uh, Cardinal Otunga impacted on uh, people, individuals, congregations, institutions, uh, families, and that is why we now wish to hear from uh, Sister, who represents the daughters of St. Paul. We wish to know from her, how did she, or how did they, as the daughters of uh, St. Paul, know uh, the servant of God? But first, Sister, please tell us, what do you do? I'm the directress of Pauline's Publications Africa. I work in our publishing house for African region. Mm -hmm. So we publish books. We have we evangelize through means of social communication, and part of it being books, audio books. We have books on Amazon, which are e-media mm -hmm. books, and we also have audio visuals. Mm -hmm. So we evangelize through the means of social communication. Mm -hmm. We inhabit the internet so that the word of God may reach far and wide. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for accepting to speak to us this mm -hmm. morning. I can see you are having uh, quite a number of copies uh, yes. with the image of the servant of God. Mm -hmm. Briefly, we'll get uh, to know mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe you could just share with us the, uh, the link or the rationale behind you having these books. Uh, Actually, mm -hmm. why I came about with these books, I've realized that since the Cardinal died, that was 2003, mm -hmm. there are so many young people who have come up 
and they have no idea of Kano Lotunga. They have no memories that have been kept. Mm -hmm. And those that are there, maybe they're in the church archives where young people are not able to access. Mm -hmm. So because of his memory, especially today as we celebrate 20 years of his departure to the house of God, I felt it very important. In fact, I told the central committee, mm -hmm. the first thing that we should do, if people have to pray through Cardinal Otunga, they have to know who was Cardinal Otunga. Mm -hmm. And that's why I came up by reprinting the books that had been published long time ago. Because we don't want his legacy to remain with the old members of the Catholic Church. We also want young people to know mm -hmm. who Cardinal Otunga is, even for us today. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I came up with this book that mm -hmm. was written in 2013, mm -hmm. reprinted again. Mm -hmm. But then I said, many people don't know Cardinal Otunga. We hear in church about him. We are being told, pray through his intercession. Mm -hmm. But unless we know who he was, his mm -hmm. virtues, his mm -hmm. simplicity and all that, mm -hmm. nobody will be able to associate. Normally, a relationship is built when you have an attachment and when you have a history of mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. That's why I decided to come up as Poland's Publications Africa to have books published again on Cardinal Otunga. Absolutely. And that's a very commendable work, uh, sister, you are doing. And as sister says, uh, Cardinal Otunga, he held from uh, a family that was deeply rooted into a traditions from uh, the father, Chief Sudi Namachanja, the paramount chief who really wanted and had wished him him to uh, take over his position mm -hmm. but he rose against that and embraced uh, Christianity mm -hmm. went ahead to become uh, the very premier indigenous bishop and later on uh, uh, also as our first cardinal and if uh, uh, of course we are hopeful that uh, this cause is going to be successful and when he is successful you'll be the very first Kenyan born uh, saint in our land exactly. so as uh, the daughters of Saint Paul what uh, do you remember? What memories do you hold about the servant of God? Who are you so close to him? He was our father. Mm. Actually, he's the reason as to why I'm the daughter of Saint Paul. Mm. He's the reason as to why we are here. I remember when we came to Africa, when the daughters of Saint Paul came to Africa, we were in Uganda and Tanzania. But he kept on following our sisters, telling them come to Nairobi. Mm. So our sisters had frequent visiting to Kanolo Tunga. They could come to Kenya to do shopping. Mm. And then once they're in Kenya, they go to visit Cardinal Otunga. But his cry was, I want the daughters of St. Paul here. I can provide anything that you want for your mission. So in 1976, when our sisters finally heeded to his call to come to Kenya, they went to stay in Flora Hostel of mm. the Consolata. Cardinal Otunga himself went to visit our sisters in the hostel to encourage them to take over the Catholic bookshop that we have at Holy Family Basilica. Mm. By that time, the Catholic bookshop was being run by the Holy Ghost Fathers. But he told them, you have the means. This is your currency. And I want to pray for you that this apostolate, the apostolate of the written word of God, may go far and wide. Mm. Actually, he's the reason as to why we are here. If you come to our house, as you enter, he's the main person who bless the house where we stay. If you enter our chapel, his drawing is there to remind us as daughters of St. Paul, if it were not for Colonel Otunga, we would not be here today. And he really supported us, even financially, with prayers. And he constantly followed our sisters to know each and every step so that our apostolate goes far and wide. Personally, I only saw him once, and that was in 2001. But I didn't have any conversation with him. I just looked at him, I loved him because of his simplicity, because of his eyes. That time he was staying at Nyumba Awaze. So somebody told me, you have to see Kanon Otunga. But I didn't have even words to tell him. So the only thing I could do is to stare at him, look at him coming out of the car, and that was enough for me. But what I saw, I saw a holy man, a simple man. And actually, is the reason as to why me, I'm a daughter of St. Paul. If it were not for Kanon Otunga, I will not be here. Maybe I will be in another congregation. But I thank God because of him, because of him believing in our congregation, believing in our apostolate, we are here today. Yeah. That's uh, quite encouraging, sister. Now we've seen some uh, the Daughters of St. Paul, that is Pauline's Publications Africa, posting some excerpts, some punchlines uh, from uh, the servant of God, and some photographs uh, that uh, he captured, he was captured uh, with uh, some members of your congregation. Yeah. Uh, what else 
besides writing are you doing as the daughters of St. Paul to keep his legacy alive in your community? Why we keep his legacy especially, it's the African Bible. Mm -hmm. He was the reason behind we going to the project of the African Bible. Mm -hmm. That was the time when Pope John Paul II invited the Africans, especially through the African Synod, mm -hmm. that the Bible should mm -hmm actually speak in people's language mm -hmm. and then we said how can the bible speak in people's language if there are no people mm -hmm. so Kano Lotunga actually followed that project with prayer mm -hmm. in that photo that you saw he was actually signing the african bible at wow. nyumba mm -hmm. and he's the first person who received the african bible mm -hmm. because the sisters owed everything to him because if it were not for him to encourage us to get the imprimatur to, mm -hmm. to even assist in sourcing the personnel mm -hmm. towards which the African Bible was interpreted into our own African language, mm -hmm. we would not have come up with that project. Mm -hmm. And also our being here, even our being at the Catholic bookshop, sometimes when life is so difficult for the sisters, mm -hmm. we always remember the words that he said. Mm -hmm. And those are the words we have put outside there on our banner. Mm -hmm. And he quoted John Paul II mm -hmm. on human work when he says, everyone should actually transform us. Mm -hmm. Every work that we do should give us values. Mm -hmm. And without values, then the word of God will not move forward. Mm -hmm. And then he even promised the daughters of St. Paul when he was blessing the Catholic bookshop and said, you are always in my apostolic prayers. Mm -hmm. You are working, you are doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. If it were not for you, I don't know where the Archdiocese of Nairobi will be mm -hmm. in terms of publication. Mm -hmm. So there are so many good memories that we as daughters of St. Paul have. And also looking at his own virtues, mm -hmm. especially the virtues of simplicity. When we look at him, when, we, when he left the Archdiocese of Nairobi to go to Nyumba Awaze, our sisters were constantly there. But one thing he reminded them, I belong to everybody. And they were so amazed by his eyes. He said, even before you said your problem, you will know what exactly you are coming to say. I think he had that inner intuition, deep spirituality, a man of God, that our sisters, even when he was at Nyumba Awaze, they never left him. Yeah. Interesting. Now, the virtue of humility uh, and servant leadership is something that so many have attested to in their uh, memories that they hold about the servants of God. And the holiness, the calm and collected demeanor. Uh, how did some of his virtues impact on uh, your religious life as uh, Sister Praxedes Napoleon? Actually, when I was reading this book, The Gift of Grace, I came upon a chapter which actually describes his experience in Kisi. After he became the first bishop, African bishop, it was not easy for him. Even some people rejected him just because he was black. But even when he was rejected, when he was interviewed in this book, he said, I never felt bitter, I never felt hurt, because that's not me. I just kept quiet. It never disturbed me. The only thing I could do, I always prayed for them. So that's the simplicity that a man who had power, a man who had everything within him, like being the cardinal or the bishop, he could have done anything, but he never take the strong side. He was always trying to, to be in the shoe of that person who has rejected him. And he once even said, when it came to tribalism, or when the appetite was here in Kenya, he said, no, you have to understand history. Things pass because he had learned, he had done his master's in theology, he has done philosophy, so he understood God and man in a different way. And I think that's what helped me. And that's what, when I read him actually, I feel sad. Why? Because there are so many things that he will tell me today that I'm doing that I'm not supposed to do, especially when confronted with difficult situation, which attitude should I take? Mm -hmm. He always remained humble. And for him, humility was not a sign of weakness, mm -hmm. but it proved to many that it was a sign of power. Mm -hmm. And that's how he won the hearts of priests, mm -hmm. the hearts of politicians, the hearts of religious, and all people in Kenya. And that's why when we look at him, we see a holy man. Because of what he went through and because of prayer, he was able to, to go through. Indeed. Yes. And uh, some of us even uh, did not, were not lucky enough to interact with him. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but uh, from what we hear uh, the people say about him mm -hmm. we just feel oh god yeah. should have brought us earlier we missed <laughs> <laughs> we missed out yes so now on the d day today mm -hmm. the 20th anniversary mm -hmm. uh, since the servant of god left us mm -hmm. how important is this day to us as catholic faithfuls mm -hmm. and even uh, non catholics because uh, i heard uh, that uh, there are those who have been uh, impacted mm -hmm. and th those who are non catholics mm -hmm. even beyond uh, the borderlines mm -hmm. of kenya mm -hmm. actually today for us is a reminder of his virtues mm -hmm. and actually archbishop agnolo is inviting us mm -hmm. to pray fervently through the intercession of the servant of God. Mm -hmm. Because as I said to you earlier on, mm -hmm. unless we know him, unless we read, unless people speak about him, mm -hmm. then we'll not be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why today marks an important day to each one of us, mm -hmm. Catholics, non-Catholics, and even to the politicians, because he was very strong and he said, I'm not a politician, mm -hmm. I'm for everybody, for every Kenyan, for mm -hmm. every citizen that is in this country. Mm -hmm. So I think this day should be a remembrance of those virtues so that we relieve them. Actually, when he was leaving the Archdiocese of Nairobi, he said, love one another. That was the final message he left. Love one another. And when he was blessing the country, Kenya, he said, I pray for unity, not only for Kenyans, but for the whole world. You can see the priestly prayer in him, wanting to be like Jesus. Actually, he emulated Jesus. Like in his final years, he was praying for love because he himself was love. He prayed for unity, and that's what today we are being called to remember. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Sister yes. Nafula. Just uh, you mentioned something that he would say uh, mm. repeatedly that I am for all. Yes. Recently, I had an offline conversation mm. with yeah. the nephew, mm -hmm. and um, he said that there, there are some favors he had sought out from the servant of God, mm -hmm. and uh, he just came out clearly and told him. I am for all. I cannot use church resources to benefit my family. Exactly. You know, and then he was, that time he said he was really surprised that mm -hmm. uh, the servant of God was so much uh, mm -hmm. uh, true to his vows, mm -hmm. true to his people mm -hmm. and fair. So yes. he considered everyone his family. He yeah. considered everyone mm -hmm. his friend. Yes. So that's quite a, a to be emulated mm -hmm. character of him. Yes. Now, uh, if you haven't gotten it clearly, Sister Nafula is also part of the Central Committee member, which is constituted by 25 members mm -hmm. and chaired by uh, Father uh, Kaigua Peter, mm -hmm. who is a lecturer and a chaplain um, of uh, the Saint. University Chapel, mm -hmm. St. Paul, mm -hmm. in the Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do? Uh, uh, what uh, what have, have you done or anything special that uh, you are doing to ensure you expedite the process as a team? As a team, actually, we have divided ourselves into mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. We have communication team mm -hmm. for which I'm the chairperson paramount. so what we are doing is mm -hmm. we have to pray that's the first request that we are making to people we have to re to pray for miracles to happen because that's one of the the the, the qualifications that they need for somebody to be a saint mm -hmm. we have to really pray and make him known so me being part of the communication committee what I've been trying to do I've entered even to social media platforms mm -hmm. TikTok Facebook WhatsApp sending messages and I can just, access to that exactly <laughs> just to make people so know that there is this need there is this holy uh, man who lived among uh, us mm -hmm. and we have to intercede for him just the way Father Lauren says that long time ago there's a time in history that a holy man lived among us but if it's not talked about if we don't pray through him then the miracles that we are looking for our work is in vain mm -hmm. but that's why we have come in as a team to really tell people this is needed at this particular time especially as we still have friends 20 years of his return to their father great yeah. thank you very much thank sister you. for speaking to us yeah. and uh, happy commemoration thank of you. the 20th anniversary of the all right, now uh, we have just been informed that uh, the procession has uh, started, led by the local ordinary, who is, by virtue of his position, the petitioner, and took over from uh, uh, Bishop Archbishop Emeritus Cardinal Njue. That is His Grace Philip Subira Nyolo uh, leading the mass, and we welcome you. Just to remind you, if you you are following and have your in intentions, I believe uh, we are going to follow. Uh, uh, we are going to pray the intercessory prayer at.
Naomba tuweze kuketi kidogo tafadhali. Kwa nafasi hii ni mwalike baba paroko wa parokia hii Father Jude James Waweru kwa hotuba fupi ya makaribisho tukiwa na sherehe na ibada ya kipekee ya kumwenzi na kumkumbuka the servant of God Morris Michael Cardinal Tunga karibu Father Jude Waweru God is good and all the time tumsifu Yesu Kristo your grace, your lordship, your eminence, my brother priests, dear brothers and sisters religious, our brothers and sisters in faith, good morning. Langu nifupisana na nikweza kualika katika hafla za leo na katika sherehe za leo Kwa kile ambacho kila moja wetu anakielewa vizuri sana kwamba we are celebrating the 20th anniversary or memorial of the servant of God Morris Michael Cardinal Tunga ambaye yuko katika safari ya kuweza kupata urithi aliyoupenda aliyoufanyia kazi na aliyotufundisha kupenda na kufanyia kazi why it is an important day is because in a way or the other most of us have been touched by his life either through the sacrament of confirmation the sacrament of ordination and also the life that he shared with us kwa hivyo tuko hapa kwa mambo matatu ambayo ni maana sana na ya heaven jabola tatu la heaven ndilo limetuleta hapa la kwanza ni kuzaliwa la pili ni kutoka kwenye dunia hii na la tatu ni hilo la heaven kwamba tuweze kumwambia huyu aliyetuongoza ili yale ambayo tunao yatafuta sisi kama wa Kristo tuweze kulipata hasa kwa kujiandaa kwema kwa maisha yetu tuweze kutamani na kuweza kutenda yale ambayo yanalingana na hayo ambayo tunamtakia yeye hivyo basi nitawalika tuweze kuchukua nafasi ingine ya kumuombea kama vile tumekuwa tukiomba tumekuwa na sala maalum tumefanya ibada maalum na leo ni nafasi ingine tumepata ya kuweza kumuombea na kuomba safari hii lakini vile vile kujiombea sisi ambao tuko katika safari hii kwa hivyo mjisikie nyumbani katika parokia hii kwa niamba ya uh, the whole community of uh, Queen of Apostles Waraka Parish our leaders the priests who are working here mjisikie nyumbani na ili tuweze kushika sherehe za leo katika furaha mioyoni mwetu karibuni sana ningependa sasa kumwalika his grace ili aweze kutuongoza katika ibada hii takatifu ya misa nikiomba kwamba wote tusimame In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and peace be to you all. So my brothers and sisters, on this wonderful occasion that we commemorate the death, the 20th anniversary of the death of our Cardinal Maurice Cardinal Tunga, it has been united in spirit, in soul, and in mind, in thanking God for him, and also in asking for forgiveness of our sins. And let us pray that the process that is in place, the process of canonization, will be even more effective and it will touch our lives so that we may walk on the, the path of holiness the path he chose to go. I confess to Almighty God in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults, 
Therefore I ask the blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, relate me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. To God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Maurice Cardinal Tunga, to whom you committed the care of your family, may with the manifold fruit of his labors enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be an affliction, and they are going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and, and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his elect. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
responsorial psalm. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. Like the deer that yearns for running stream, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? My soul is thirsting for God. The living God. For I would go to the place of your wondrous tent, all the way to the house of God, amid cries of gladness and thanksgiving, the throng keeping. Joyful festival. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. Oh, send forth your light and your truth, they will guide me on. They will bring me your holy mountain to the place where you dwell. My soul is lasting for God, the living God. And I will come to the on the harp, O oh God, my God. My soul is for God, the living God. Why are you cast down, my soul? serving presence and my God. My soul is lasting for God, the living God. Whether we die, we are the Lord's. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, none of us 
lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord of the dead and of the living. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So each of us shall give account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Blessed of my father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. According to Matthew, to went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they are says the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the heart. Blessed are those who hunger, and thus for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in her heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men live by you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for you are reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Mungu ni mwema na kila wakati. So, brothers and sisters, today we gather here to commemorate a great man of our time, Michael Morris Cardinal Tunga, a man of great faith. But before I comment on the scripture reading of today, allow me to let three questions arise. One, what do we want to remember today about my, uh, my comrades Kano Tunga? Second, what reasons do we put forward for giving such respect? People have been dying, but we don't give a respect like this one. And that, what are we here for? First of all, let me share with you some of my personal experience with the Cardinal Otunga. Now, this is between us now. Don't go out and talk about it. Eh? We agree on that. Eh? Otherwise, I will not share with you. First, uh, Cardinal Michael Morris Otunga was a man of courage. He had no fear of anybody. And this is well established by one day. There was a lot of talk in the family life uh, about using the cordons. Everywhere in the government, you know, it was like when we had COVID, if one didn't have a mask, it was kind of a crime. So that time, using the cordon was the talk of the day. So what the Cardinal Tunga did, what did he do? Him and the late Archbishop Manasseh Kuria of ACK with the uh, my family life team, they went and bought all the cordons in the pharmacy. And uh, they went to Uhuru Park and burnt them. And burnt them. 
which of course was even against the government. The, and Cardinal Tunga was very, very strong on that, in protection of the family. When I say that, when I say that I'm sure I have some witnesses here, because I see Makondawa there and she can agree with me. That happened. So, Kanotunga was a man who loved the family, family life, and would do anything, everything possible to protect the family. Kanotunga had a great love for priests, for some of us that he ordained. He had great love for us. In every, every priest celebrity anniversary, he would give a gift. He would light a card and put a token inside of 50 shillings and he sent to the priest. Every anniversary, he would do that of every priest. So he had great love for priests. And then every end of the month, we were getting, uh, again, this is between us now, eh, as our allowance. Eh? This is what we were getting allowance as priests those days, 900 shillings. I don't know how many priests you are, how much you are getting now, you priests. Eh? By that time, we used to get 900. And Utunga, Karno Utunga was making sure that uh, we receive that. So, what I'm saying is that Karno Utunga had that love of priests, a very humble man that we know. And in my case, what I can remember is in 1973, when he was created cardinal. He was everywhere in the media, in the whole country. And uh, during that time, that year, again, don't tell anybody, that, don't tell anybody now, eh? I was a student here. I was informed here. So that year, 1973, just the mid after he became a cardinal, he visited my home parish for confirmation, a kino parish. And being a junior seminarian, just the, I don't know whether those, whether those who are serving here are junior seminarians, but a junior seminarian, I was told to go and, uh, and be an altar boy. So I went, I served the mass, and then he looked at me and said, hey, young man, where are you? I told him, no, I'm a student in a junior seminary. Okay, when I'm going, I'll give you a lift. So, when I, the time came to come back, he told me, get in the car. Get there, be, sit behind. So, I was shaking, of course. Eh? This is the cardinal. Eh? It's the first cardinal, and we have never had a cardinal. So we came, he gave me a lift, and uh, we used to Modaiga. I thought he would drop me there to take a matter to come this way. But then he came, he came this way. I thought he's coming to see the rector, maybe to ask why I was allowed to go out. But we came, it was in the evening. I remember it was even, you know, these are things that you cannot forget. We came, just the, the near the church, in the, outside the church. The other students were going for mass. So he dropped me there, I came out of the car, and he went back. So he was bringing to the seminary. And then the other, the, the, the students were looking at me. And then, and then I was saying, ah, don't worry, I'm the one now. <laughs> and, uh, and I was feeling myself, well, because they were all looking forward to see him. Eh? But I not only see him, but I was in the car. Not only in the car, but also I was a member at the back, back seat. So he had uh, that kind of, uh, of humility. He was driving a very, very 
Simbu car. I think it was 204. Lawrence might know that, might remember the car, 204. A Pujot. And he was driving himself. And when I saw our second cardinal driving himself, I said, cardinals normally drive themselves. <laughs> so that was him. The other experience I had of Cardinal Tunga was uh, when I was a senior seminarian, we had a rabbi in Kaguri. I was in Givungori for pastoral work. And then he was there in Kagui for Harambe. Then Harambe went up to around seven. And then we had to come back, we had to come to Kidongori, and you have him, he has to come to Nairobi. Again, he was driving himself. Uh, he reached the tarmac of Kidongori, Kiambu, Jackson going to Kagui, at around 7.30. He was ahead of us. We thought he had gone. So when he reached the junction, he stopped there. He came out of the car. He, start, he started re reciting the rosary. So when we came, we found him reciting the rosary. And he asked us, are you safe? I have been praying for you. We told him, no, we are safe. Then he went, and then we went, went to the parish. You know, that, 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 uh, that shocked me. So what I'm saying is a very, very humble uh, person. And I'm sure the work, the life was living here. He's he also interceding for us there upstairs. And that's why it's important that uh, we continue to pray for his uh, beatification because for sure he's a holy man saint. Now, that's not the gospel. Let me come back to, the, to the, the scripture. So, brothers and sisters, we have taken our first reading for the book of wisdom. Instead of book, book of wisdom, I'd like to comment on the book of Silak, which has the same, same message, chapter 44, verses 10 to 15. The author of the book praises the godly man, each in his own time, who lived generously, and whose good works had not been forgotten. The other emphasis emphasizes that such men rest in peace and respect, while their names live on for all generations. Father, he explains that people usually proclaim their wisdom and celebrate their lives. So, brothers and sisters, reflecting on how our faith has grown and spread like mustard seed through the hard work of our ancestors in faith, like Michael Morris Cardinal Tunga. We can proudly appreciate the gift of His Eminence Cardinal Otunga and honor him. Honor him as a courageous son of our church who will never fade in our memory. His life was an extraordinary journey from beginning to end with such great effect both for our local church and in first church. So let us today thank God for this great hero as we celebrate his life today. In the second reading, again I would like to take uh, Romans 12 verses 3 to, to 13. That says that each of us will be judged by the study of faith God has given him or her. Our gifts differ according to the grace given to us. Some have prophecy, some faith, 
some administration, some teaching, and alas, the gift of alms giving. Whatever your gift, do it cheerfully. Do not give up if trials come, because His Eminence Cardinal Tunga did not give up. Keep on praying. Make hospital hospitality your special care. And here, St. Paul insists on a variety of God's gift and also on the meaning and limitations of these personal charisms, which must be coordinated with one another. In leaders like His Eminence, Michael Morris Cardinal Tunga, it is possible to see signs of natural faith that principally radiates and gifts of administration, talent, and leadership. Very good, he was a very good administrator. I say that because I was in uh, his team of administration as his team as his Fokins director and the pastoral coordinator at that time. The ultimate symbol of dignity, of unwavering dedication to the growth of faith, a leader of unity, peace, and reconciliation. A man who was able to unite the diocese, the people. And if I say that this, the priests who are here, they will agree with me that the unity of the priest we have in this diocese, the genesis, is Cardinal Morris Otunga. He was very, very much together priest. And uh, always he was there in our monthly meetings without failing. So it was the end of unity, peace, and uh, reconciliation. And then in today's gospel, in the gospel of Matthew, the Beatitudes, Jesus is giving a wide teaching on our attitudes. This gospel passage is both consoling and strengthening because it offers the poor the kingdom of God and assures the mourning and suffering people that they will be comforted. When he says, blessed are the poor, for they will inherit the kingdom of heaven, he means not only material poverty, but also spiritual poverty, which is the worst poverty. The worst poverty is spiritual poverty. A wealthy man can be called a poor man if he has no obsession towards his wealth. In short, attitude of attachment and detachment that one has towards his wealth determines whether he is poor or not. Indeed, Maurice Maikwani Otunga was detached. Detached. And that's shown even uh, his way of life. In Matthew, Matthew 6, verse 21, puts, where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, our call is not to search something, something on, the, on this earth, but to search for the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, and whatever we have is to, to bring us closer to God. The kingdom of God is described by love, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, and where there are these things, there comes the kingdom of heaven. 
It means that our family, our community, and our society must be filled with love, peace, and joy because that is the kingdom of God. In Matthew 6, again, that three says, seek the kingdom of Christ and it is righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You have nothing to lose. And therefore, dear, brother, dear friends, to seek the kingdom of God is to love one another and to live in peace and be filled with the joy in Jesus Christ. For if we are heard from our second leading, if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Romans 14, verse 8. We are therefore humbled today, brethren, as we remember and celebrate Michael Morris Cardinal Otunga, our hero in faith, who had the spirit of humanity and oneness to serve all. So when uh, he said codoms must be banned, it's not only for Catholics, but for all. But the love of humanity, the love of God, will grow stronger in us day by day and becoming new because the love of God endures forever. As we are joined together, let the spirit of the day shown by God live in us and we move in it. Now may the grace and mercy of God be with all and the love of God flow in each and every person in the corners of our local and universal church. So we continue praying and leaving that example of Morris, Michael Morris Kanotunga in our lives and look forward for the day when the universal church will be declared beatified and we know that now we have somebody there upstairs who knows, who understands us, who will be interceding for us. God is good. And all the time. In a spirit of prayer and thanksgiving to the Lord who has spoken to us through his word, an inspiring homily given and delivered to us by his Lordship, let us pause for a moment. And let us be upstanding for the prayers of the faithful. Those who are prepared, kindly move forward. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. Sala Yakanisa. E Mungu, kwa wema hai na mateule, Umiatarisha makao yako ya milele kwa ajili ya adama yako. Uzidishe katika kanisa lako nema ulio 
Rijalia ili waamini wako waongezeke daima bariki viongozi wote wa kanisa ili katika ushahidi wao ulimwengu uwekwe wafu kadri ya mapenzi yako e baba mwenyezi jalia waamini wote baraka ya wito wa kitume tunaposhuhudia mwito wa sinodi ya umoja na ushirikiano tujalie ujasiri katika roho wako ili tufuate mifano bora ya watakatifu wako turi shuhudia upendo wako mkuu e bwana utusikie sala kwa ajili ya kuombea nchi e mungu muumba wa vitu vyote umempa mwanadamu amri ya kufanya kazi tunakuomba utujalie ili kwa mfano na ulinzi wa mtakatifu Yosefu tufanye kazi unayo amuru na kupata tunzo unazo ahidi tunakuomba ujalie viongozi wote wa serikali heshima na kutunza nchi na wot, watu wote bila ubaguzi wala ubinafsi wajalie huruma na upendo katika uongozi wao e bwana jalia viongozi wote maamuzi yanayoandamana na mapenzi yako twaombea wananchi wote uzalendo na umoja e bwana utusikie sala kwa ajili ya familia e Mungu mwenyezi mwenye upendo na huruma tuangazie tuwe tuweze kukutambua familia zetu kama kanisa ndogo na shule ya imani upendo ukarimu ukweli uwazi na uwajibikaji tunazuombea familia zetu ziwe bustani bora na salama za kuchipusha na kulea miito ya ndoa utawa na upadri tunawaombea vijana na watoto wetu uchaji ili wawe na bidii ya kujitunza kwa kushika amri zako na kuishi fadhila za kiinjili baba wa huruma tunawakabidhi familia zenye msukosuko na mafarakano ya ulevi ubinafsi ili kwa hisani yako uwape neema mwanga na nguvu za kuanza maisha mapya yenye amani na upatanisho tunaomba toba na msamaha kwa ukatili manyanyaso na hata mauaji katika familia zetu na uwaponye wote waliojeruhiwa kwa maneno matendo na makwazo ya aina zote tunakuomba uwe kitulizo na faraja kwa maisha ya familia jalia familia zote kuiga mfano bora wa familia takatifu ya Yesu Maria na Yosefu Bwana utusikie prayer for the beatification process Our heavenly Father through your son Jesus Christ and through the intercession of our blessed mother Mary and the intercession of servant of God Morris Michael Cardinal Lotunga we come before you thanking you for the gift of our petitioner Emeritus Cardinal John Njue we thank you for the gift of his grace Philip Anyolo we thank you for the gift of His Lordship David Kamau we thank you for the gift of all the bishops all the priests all the consecrated men and women and all the lay people who have been helping us up to where it has reached we thank you for the family we thank you for the beatification committee 
chaired by Father Peter Kaigwa. We thank you for everybody who has come today to celebrate with us the 20th anniversary of, your, of our servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga. Heavenly Father, we ask you humbly that you may continue guiding us in this process and through the intercession of servant of God that we may go through this process and in the end we may be able to get a saint of our own and for the whole world. Lord, hear us. Let's pray for special needs. Dear Lord, our Father, through the intercession of uh, the servant of God, Cardinal Otunga, we bring special needs, especially in our country, before you. We pray for the sick in hospitals and in homes, those who may not even have someone to visit them, that you may strengthen, Lord, strengthen them, Lord, and let them be, uh, to go through their suffering with courage, uniting their suffering to your cross. We ask especially that they may have solace in knowing that you are with them. Father, we want to ask special graces for our country and families and everybody who is going through economic struggles. We bring before you those who are lacking and short of, special, of basic needs. We ask that you open the hearts of those who have more to be able to share with those who have less. We bring before you the youth and the young people, especially in the current society, who are going through a lot of turbulences with ideologies left and right. We ask for enlightenment for those who are adults to be able to guide the youth to find the straight path and live the life according to the truth. And for those of us who are grown up that we may also adhere to the truth and spread the truth. Father, we ask for vocations in the church. We ask for a greater faith among us so that like the cardinal, we may be courageous and soldier on believing the truth that you have taught the church. Wele Papa, Omulongi, Wele Papa, Omulindi, Wele Papa, Hakaba. Lord, hear us. Let us turn to the last page of uh, uh, leaflets for the prayer for the beatification of the servant of God, Maurice Michael Karno Otunga. We granted you as servant, Maurice Karn Michael Karno Otunga, the grace to be an exemplary pastor at the service of the church, making him a symbol of humanity and love. While denying and discussing everything, grant we beseech thee that we may also learn to respond faithfully to the demands of the Christian Caucasian, converting all moments and discussions of the life of Jesus of the loving Jesus. Neighbors of the Jesus guide, serving the kingdom of God in humanity. We humbly request you to grant your servant a share in the glory of heaven, which is promised to those who have served you in the world. The session bless the child, our country, our families and children, and grant us the favors we humbly request, especially. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them share us in your redemption. Through Christ our Lord. wakati wa sadaka na matoleo ya kanisa kwa ya mtuongoze kwa nyimbo za sadaka
brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable with God the Almighty Father. We have to beseech boundless mercy Lord that this sacrifice which you are departed servant Maurice Michael while in the body offered to you majestly for the salvation of the faith or the faithful may now bring him to your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of death may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, as an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, and with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, and uh, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our consideration, we pray, O Lord, and fans the peace and salvation of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your appearing in church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, the order of bishops and the other clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen gracious to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, your massive Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Michael Morris Kanotunga, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our holy body after the pattern of his own glorious body. 
to our departed brothers and sisters too, and all who have who are pleasing to you, that they are passing on this life, give guiding admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from them. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of his, your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are waiting the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity to your families, to your churches, in according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should end under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Tuwe na muda mfupi katika hali ya shukrani na ibada na sala kwa ke mwenyezi mungu za kristu ya mpokea katika mafumo matakatifu ya karisti. Mamba wanakoya mtongoze kwa imbo wa shukrani. Thank you. 
kindly remain upstanding for post-communion prayer. Let us pray. May your mercy and merciful kindness, which we have employed, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who reigns, lives and reigns forever and ever. Naomba tuweze kuketi kwa mda mfupi wa hotuba na maelekezo hapa na pale. Kwanza kabisa, we welcome Reverend Father Peter Kaiwangogi, the Chairman Central Committee for the Caucus of Sainthood of the Servant of God, Michael Morris Kanotunga, for welcome speech and also a few acknowledgments. Father Peter, on my right. My left, sorry. Tumkaribishe mwenyekiti wa shughuli hizi kwa makofi Padre Peter Kaiwangoge. Your Grace, Philip Agnolo, Metropolitan Archbishop of Nairobi, Your Lordship, David Kamau, Auxiliary Bishop of Nairobi, Your Eminence, John Cardinal Njue, Emeritus Archbishop of Nairobi, Reverend Professor Lawrence Joroge, the vice postulator of the course of the beatification of Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga, the servant of God, my brother priests present, and thank you very much for coming. People of God, the family of Mze Sudi, where the servant of God grew and was founded on faith. Good morning, all of you. I stand here on behalf of the Central Committee that has been appointed uh, to look into the matters and the activities that are uh, on the course, on the process of the beatification of the servant of God, Maurice Cardinal Otunga. And I thank His Grace to have appointed me a few months ago to be the chair of that committee. And since I stand on behalf, I will ask at this moment all the members of the committee present to kindly be upstanding so that we may recognize them, most of them standing in front here. Your Grace, this is the team that uh, uh, will be and has been in the activities that uh, you charge us to follow in the course and the process of the beatification of Maurice Cardinal Otunga. Please be seated. Thank you. Our role is not very simple, but it is simple because over and above other things that we have to do, the activities that we have to do that uh, go with this process, we are also asked to pray as a, as, a, as a committee. And indeed, your grace, when we meet, we pray. I personally, as Bishop Kamau himself, uh, related on the, uh, the experience that he had in contact with the, he, the servant of God, 
pride and I'm happy to participate in this committee because I also met him. Some people do not believe that I met him, but I met him. One year into our ordination, uh, the servant of God chose to come and live nearby at the Mjiwa Waze. And when we were ordained by the, uh, His Grace, uh, Raphael Dingi Mwananzeki of Happy Memories, I came uh, to Mjiwa Waze to visit him. And I came and he opened the door when I knocked and we had a short chat because he was old and frail. And I told him, I had lived in the seminary looking forward to be ordained by him, but it never came to pass. But I was happy to have met him as a priest. So he told me one statement. I said it uh, re recently on Capuchin TV. And he looked at me and those who know him, he used to gaze at you and told me, young man, work for the people of God, for that is why you are ordained. Now that statement is that important that uh, it has to be sabotaged somehow. <laughs> young man, work for the people of God, for that is why you are ordained. For me, I am old and frail. My only work, pastoral work left for me to do is to pray. And that was profound for me. And I think, and this is my reflection, as we commemorate 20 years since he left us, I think that pastoral work, praying, for the church, praying for all of us, did not end on the 6th of September 2003 when he rested. That work, that pastoral work continues. He continues praying for us, for the church, for us as the church of Kenya and as the church of the Archdiocese of Nairobi. And for that, therefore, as a committee, as a people of God, we are joined, we are asked to join in that pastoral activity of prayer together with him. While he prays for us, we too pray for the process of his beatification and eventually canonization uh, so that uh, that what we desire as a church in Kenya, as a country, that is gifted in many ways, with many resources, with many people of goodwill, that that process may be seen uh, to term. I am very sure that steadily that is going to be achieved, and for us we seek that you pray with us. And when we ask you to support us in ways that we will need for the purpose of that process, kindly come forward and do it. I want to thank you, all of you, particularly for coming today. I thank you for joining us in this worthy cause for the church in Kenya. I want to pass the apologies of Father Wallace Nganga, uh, who is part of the committee, uh, who is not present here, for Father David Njao Kemohu, who passed the information and thank him for broadcasting the information about this day, and for Father Mwaneki Rido, uh, who had to run to an emergence that came up this morning. Thank you all. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Lordship. Thank you, Eminence. Thank you, Brother Priest. And thank you all. Asante Nisana. A hearty round of applause for our chairman. Thank you, Father Peter. At this juncture, I invite a family representative to make a short speech.
Mr. George Nabutola. Family representative, Mr. George Nabutola, for a brief speech. God is good, and all the time, the grace, the lordship, and uh, your eminence, I stand before you here, one, to say thank you for assigning a place for the family, that the church recognizes that Odunga came from a family, and he has his people around who regularly come around during such occasion. Before I proceed, I have to say thank you very much to Father Lawrence, who has always visited us. We've been with him at home in the village, which I will mention soon. Uh, and your grace on the left, is some young priest we, we helped mold in Langata. And I was proud to see him here. He was molded under Father Kamumoe. And I'm happy also to see them here. Cardinal Maurice Otunga was made a priest in 1950 and he used to come home in a black cassock. The father used to wear a, black, a white cassock. So they wondered whether the Catholic Church was also wearing the black cassock, which later I didn't seem to see. But we had a lot of regard and special regard for him. He had two brothers, one John Nabutola, my father, another Peter Nabangi. They saw the, the knife on the same year, 1942. When I say that, traditionally, you know what I mean. They got circumcised the same year. How many of you here have been friends with people for two, three years? They were friends from childhood until God called them. And they remained friends all along. Uh, we, <clears throat> shortly after becoming a priest, Otunga, as I refer to him as Papa, was made a bishop around 56. That was hardly even 10 years. Then we got the message, 1956, that they prepared the father, Sudi Namajanja, and the mother, Rose Namisi, who was just Namisi but later baptized Rose, to prepare and go to Mukumu, that great things were to happen to the family. February 1957, Cardinal Rotunga became a bishop, and they used to write the first African bishop of Kenya. Those who happened to get across those photographs of 1957, 25th February, the first bishop of Kenya. This was a, a lucky person, for within a short while, within 10 years or so, he was a cardinal. Uh, when he, was, he went to Rome, he met some of the priests and the bishops who had worked in Kenya. They received him so well that he was a hero to himself. I'm talking about what he told me. Because when he came from Rome, he, came, he sent me seven photographs, many of which are still there. And for some, unfortunately or fortunately, I seem to be the only person having. But you can get them in resurrection garden. I made sure they were delivered there. I've sent there about over 20 photographs at the Resurrection Garden. Now, Cardinal Rotunga was a family person. And if he came home, 
you would ask the mamas to make him a meal, a very simple meal. You know, Louis has steak chicken, but you will ask for some smoked meat, if any, and that will do for him. And then he would go to rest. We had special linen for him in our house. He would rest for an hour or so, maybe on the way to Uganda or on the way from Uganda. So he always called on us. Of course, he had the attachment for his Kibabi Church, Kibabi Mission, where he was baptized in 1937 with the Godfather, one bending to Atitwa. So he always called in. But back to position, when he was sent to Kisi, he made a name in Kisi, but the Kisis haven't believed that he was in the Kisi. When he passed on, your grace, we were organizing. I joined Father Lawrence, Father Dominic Wamgunda in the funeral arrangement. One lady came to me and said, if it was not for this man, I would never have stepped in America. If it was not for this man, I would never have reached university level. He took me to America, and I worked hard. Here I am. I stay in Karen. You, those of you know where Karen is. <laughs> so she told me, you come and pick a cow and slaughter for the people coming from Bungoma. I was at her residence by around four or five. We slaughtered one, gave a sumptuous meal to the people, the delegation from Bungoma at the railway club. That was Cardinal Otunga. Now to the family, he helped some of my cousins who are seated here. He took John, his brother's son, from Nairobi to Musoriot. Those of you who know where Musoriot is, is in Kapsabit, in Iska to Musoriot. Father was talk, Bishop talked about the, the car. It was pictured 204, KMU 123, if I can still recall. And when we went to look for another cousin of mine, he here seated. We went to Tokoto. See, he was debating whether they will accept my sister for admission. So he went in, left me in the car around for something. He was a young man, left me in the car, came out after about 20 minutes with a, a khaki envelope. And he told me this admission for your sister, make sure she comes tomorrow for admission as a, Tokoto was a TTC, and I think still is, as a teacher. Then he gave me a rosary to pass over to her. Cecilia is here, she can testify that. He also solemnized a number of weddings. Um, my sister is here, 1971 or so, and I was the MC in that one, a young man, I didn't know what an MC is, but I'd managed. He always was close to his people. Akisikia mtoto ya nduku yake, anafanya arusi, he always wanted to be there. If he was a Catholic, he ceremonized the marriage. Funerals, he came home to attend. When the father saw it, pastor 1971, Ali, he was in Machakos. When he got the message, he drove throughout the night, arriving home in the morning, was received by one Nabutola, and they immediately put in motion the funeral arrangement. They came to Kisumu for the coffin. How it reached Bungoma, Cardinal Otunga just prayed, but Nabutola organized for transport to Bungoma from Kisumu. So, uh, in Bungoma, particularly where he comes from, the village, Tulumba, I said I would mention it, Mateka, the Catholic Church, which was hived off from Bungoma. If you went to any of those churches, 
O Demasis, we have recited this prayer that we are reciting here, especially the PMC. Everybody has recited, whether the old mothers in Israeli, whether those who are enlightened a bit like me, we would always, we recite, we don't even look at the book. It has been with us. We say, time Sister Esther, whose name I didn't mention earlier, had asked me to translate it in Luya. I said, you have the mutila there. Maybe you can work together. But people memorized the prayer so much that we did not want to put it to in Kiluya. So that is Otunga. <laughs> Cardinali, now if you arrived in Bungoma, what I'm saying is partly what he told me. People would uh, surround his small car and would want a fair home. If there are not many, he would put them in the car drive them home and give them what he thought they actually wanted. It was not the lift home, it was the money. So, say so and so, I made so and so. I decided to take her home. I decided to take him home. And one thing, for those who come from Western, if Cardinal Rotunga knew that you are a lawyer, he just spoke to lawyer. And I used to take friends at the, the residence. They keep putting English, 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 and I had cautioned them. This gentleman does not go to English when he knows you come from Bungoma, particularly Bungoma or Busia. And we have Bahone Kilani in Busia. His grace knows. So, uh, we have been praying hard for St. Wood. We still pray. We had one father, Pius, who really worked on us. And he changed the Kimatuni parish. For him, you must appreciate that and acknowledge that Cardinal Rotunga came from that village. And therefore, pray hard that we, he becomes a saint. And therefore, I also ask the gracious men and women here to pray hard. We keep asking, as Father Lorenzo and Sister Esther, Sasa atakuwa send lini? And I think they are used to that question. Atakuwa send lini? Ata minta wa leo. But the issue is, we have to pray hard. We have to pray hard. He liked the family, and he remained with the family. And when he passed on, he was sent to matter by a member of my family again. I've seen another father who was close to. The gentleman who took Cardinal Otunga to hospital is seated there. You can stand on The last trip to hospital, Mata is there. Your Grace, we were used to going to Mujiawaze. We were quite used to going. So when my brother arrived there, sister then, a Tanzanian nun, was in a panic situation and was looking for transport. So my brother requested that, requested her to accept that he takes his eminence to Mata Hospital. And he used to go there every morning. People didn't know whether he was a priest, whether he was a what, but by six he would be around there just to see him every day until God called him. And I think the priests you know the better. When he passed on, the word was, Mata made a coffin, but there was a word that we should have a very simple coffin. That was Cardinal Otunga. What do we do with this coffin? Change it. We need a simple coffin. And where was he buried? Among priests. Your grace, I think that is true. Among priests, take me to St. Austin's when I die. Now, before he came to that, there was a time as I wind up, MC. 
People came from home. My grandfather, my uncle, Peter Navangi. And we remained also to, before I proceed, how about you stand? This is Peter Nabangi's son. Peter Nabangi was a Sumbi trained teacher. But my father said, leave that and become, let's work together. See, my father was a chief. The father became assistant chief. So they came to see his eminence. That time he was an archbishop. And he took them out of the compound. You are familiar with the residents. Those who are familiar. He had planted a banana stem. See, when you start a home, you must have a banana stem. The tradition, you must, and Father Malopa is here. Father, <laughs> we worked together during the funeral service. So when the, the uh, president's uh, entourage questioned thing, then he said the church has also got its own protocol and they took his word. Thank you, Father. <laughs> so, then he was asked a question which many of you keep asking. Why was he buried here? Cardinal Rotunga said, asked them, when a girl gets married, where do they bury her when she dies? Where she is married? He said, but I got married to the church. She was in Nairobi for 34 years. 34 years in the archdiocese of Nairobi. So he said, if I pass on, just bury me here. Let the priests and all the spiritual leaders take care of my body. So that was what he, told, what he said. Now as I wind up, I used to enjoy joining the Wazes. In the, at the residence, but you would arrive with a tray of drinks. I noticed a fanda, thinking they would use it for, for the whiskey that is being served, only for him to serve me the fanda. <laughs> when he was here, the little sisters, Muji Awaze, I said, now, if you are not so frail, she would, I, would, uh, I would give you one. You used to give me a soda, but I would give you one. So we all laughed, and he delayed going for mass by half an hour. I'm trying to get back to Bishop Kamau's humility statements on uh, Cardinal. Now, there's just a statement here. When you realize just how beautiful life is, and how privileged you are to be alive, to witness the miracles around you. You will tilt your head back and smile gratefully at the sky and say, thank you, God. Asante. Thank you very much, George, for a speech well articulated, spiced with humor. Makofi tena kwake bwana George kwa hotuba yake nzuri one key person in this whole process is reverend professor father Lawrence Joroge the vice postulator postulator father Ken ananiambia hapa ni mtangazaji of the course of sainthood of the servant of god Maurice Michael Kanotunga tumkaribishe kwa makofi so that he may explain to us and update us where the course has reached and also give us a guidance. Thank you for the book that you have today written and highlighted many things about the servant of God. Professor Father Njoroge. Your grace, your lordship, your eminence, the religious men and women present here, the family of the servant of God, the people from the family of Surina Machanja, the Bahone, we see them here. Father Peter Kaigua, who is the chair of the Central Committee, my brothers, my brother priests here, 
and uh, dear people of God. Mungu ni mwema na kila wakati God is good and all the time I am grateful for this opportunity to say a few words. Very, very grateful for being in this mass. Very grateful because exactly 20 years ago, a good and holy man returned to his heavenly father. A good and holy man lived among us. I have been asked to give an update of the process, and I am going to give a summary, a mutasari, and I cannot afford to be long because the professor who taught me philosophy and also taught me to be a person of Maneno Machache is here, and I do not want to fail the exam. Therefore, I am going to go in point form. Over 40 years ago, John Kadnonjue and I, and a few other people here were in the same class, only that he was standing on one side, and many of us were standing on the other. He taught us Presi, he taught us Mutasari, and therefore we are grateful for that. Point number one, immediately the servant of God passed on, in the year 2003, there were people who wanted him to be pronounced a saint immediately without a delay. But the Catholic Church has its processes. And therefore, the process did not begin immediately. It officially began in the year 2009. Point number two. In the year 2010, His Eminence John Cardinal filed a petition in Rome and in the same year, 2010, Maurice Cardinal Tunga was given the title Servant of God. Point number three. The following year, the year 2011, the diocesan phase opened. And in November, September of 2013, the documents were sealed they were incorporated into what is called the Acts of Inquiry and sent to Rome, where the Roman phase started. Point number four, in the same year, 2013, between October and December, the Acts of Inquiry were evaluated by the dicastery that is competent to carry out that work. Point number five, on January 14, 2000, January 14, 2014, the decree of validity validating the diocesan tribu tribunal, the material that had been collected, not only from the diocese, but also from all places where the servant of God had worked, that document was issued, the document of validity. Point number six, in the year 2014, the postulator began writing the document known as the positio, which is required for the progress of the process. Point number seven, in the year 2021, on the 26th of April, the official biography was transmitted to Rome and it was acknowledged. Point number eight, and this is the key point here. There has been a communication recently that came from the postulator in Rome 
Dr. Waldo Hilgeman, and it was sent to the petitioner and to the office of the, that Kari conducts the process in Nairobi, saying that the position now is ready and that it will be presented to the dicastery in Rome, to the department in Rome, so that the, for the discernment and uh, so that they may be able to vote for the servant of God to be considered to be promoted to the next level. And as I conclude, we wanted to thank God during this Mass. Thank God because God gave us a good and holy man. And I want to be very grateful to the family of the servant of God because one and a half years ago, when I came to Bungoma to collect material for the official biography, George and Flora and the Bahone who are here, members of the clan, you treated me very well. I did not lack for anything. Whenever I needed Ugali, it was there. Then Coco was there. I was taken to all the places where I needed. It was a great welcome for which I am very, very grateful. And it is for that reason that we were able to complete the official biography. And God bless you. Thank you. And you followed it up by sending me some tea. My, my fellow ones worked in Kisi, near where Flora Nabutola works. And you sent me some tea, and therefore it was a very, very good memory also receiving. You followed it up with a gift. You are generous there, and you followed up with the gifts. We are very, very grateful. Now it is my pleasure and uh, honor to invite your grace, our Archbishop, Philip Agnolo, who is the petitioner, to come and say a few words. Thank you very much. I, I can see there is some conferring. This is your diocese. You speak from where you wanted to speak. We cannot summon you to any place. You are in your own diocese. Shukrani na mungu abariki hi process. Thank you. So, my brother Bishop David Kamau, your eminence, my brothers in the priesthood, sisters and brothers, and in a special way, our family, the family of Nautola, I'm so honored to be before you to say a word of thank you for coming on this great day. That is our day, and we are confirming that we shall continue doing it even in the years to come, the way we have done it today, and even better. Uh, I want to appreciate the fact that the process of canonization is on course, and as the speakers have mentioned here, they have mentioned that it is not without us. We are also invited into that cause through our prayers and our contributions. So I'm happy that even the biggest number of my brothers in the priesthood came. And when I met one of them, it was Father Kimani, who told me this is a great day. We are very happy. So thank you very much, my brothers in the priesthood. And we still continue to encourage you, plus may all other religious to come in the future to support this cause that is ours, that we may be holy. Uh, Father Bishop mentioned two things. 
that were very much at heart of our cardinal, the family and the priesthood. And that's why I've thanked the priest for being so happy today and coming in big number. I'm sure he's praying for us. At all costs, he's praying for us. And the family is also, I'm very happy because as also I prayed in preparation of this wonderful day, meditating here and there, I thought of much of the family. And I said, this family which gave us his eminent the cardinal must be blessed and be blessed forever from generation to generation. So we focused. <laughs> and we focused on the family. And today, I said something will happen in the name of the family and the families. Giving is from the families. And you know what happened? Today, when I came and I was told by one priest that there's some family want to see me here, I said, who are they? Eh? But then I said, okay, we calmed down, and I went with the Bishop Kamau, and went to meet another family. And they wanted to do exactly one thing like the family did. Uh, this family, very simple, very unnoticeable. They said they have been contemplating in all their lives to give five acres of tea plantation to the church. And I counted it also as one of the miracles that we are, we are expecting, that you came is a miracle, all of you. That all of us were happy, as Father mentioned, we are also, a great, we have a great day, it's a miracle. And that this family also, just from nowhere, said, I give this farm. They did not know we are celebrating this occasion today. But said, is that it? I said, yeah, yeah, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary or memorial of the Cardinal. And they were very happy because they gave it for the intention of the evangelization of the cardinal was there at that time. And we promised we shall work together. <laughs> this process that is on began with the cardinal himself, not with us. That he may be a saint, it began with him. And he showed us the way to help him and to journey together that all of us may be saints. What he began many years ago is not to be accomplished even for, you know, with us today or in 100 days. It is something that is ongoing. It will not be even sometimes in our lifetime because the call is for all of us to be saints. It is our project. It will not be finished in these first, as I said, 5,000 days. It is still there. It continues. So in such a way that, as Father Kaigwa told us, it calls for us to continue praying for this cause because he continues praying for us that we may follow the course that he is also following. So that where he is, as a saint, all of us may be. As I reflected on that project, I saw so many things that happened around the life of the Cardinal, as mentioned by the family and everybody else. I don't know, Bishop, uh, Father Lawrence Njereke will have to enlighten me because he's a, a historian. Uh, I want to know those cardinals and those bishops who were there during the Second Vatican Council, how many are now saints? Maybe you can help us to understand so that we, we number him. We number him in that number. But I want to say so because in that Second Vatican Council, in which our cardinal was so implanted and rooted about the family and the life of a priest and life of religious life, calling two callings, he started to build a culture of holiness, a culture of holiness. More than ever before during that time in the Second Vatican Council, it was pronounced that we are called to be holy. When the council 
underlined this idea of universal call to holiness. To a certain extent, it said something very new that in the Cardinal had it already and it embraced him in the whole of his life and that is where we are now. It is said that all Christians in any state and or any, at, at any work of life, or work of life, are called to be to the fullness of Christians, Christian life and to the perfect love. They are called to holiness. It is this general feeling, it is this general holiness which his eminence desired that we all walk along. He's gone ahead of us so that we may also join that holiness. And for that reason, we are called to pray for him to lead us. As the first, he's always struck the first in many things. He was always the, the first, bishop, as you said, archbishop, the first cardinal, the first, first, everything. As the first, as we pray that it will be the saint among the Kenyans, we want to pray that we also, he also opens the way for us as we continue doing what he taught us. Do this in memory of me. It is a holiness which leaves the church to enter into the reality of every human life, into every human life. It will necessarily be a quiet holiness and an unclaimed for anybody because we all are called to that. That was the life of his name, the cardinal. He invited everybody, went down to the, to the level, lowest level, to, go, to invite everybody to come to serve him. But it will be also a luminous and transparent point in our life to see that it is possible to be holy as from the matters and things that we live in our life. Through the discreet, humble, but decisive and courageous process that we are undergoing for the Cardinal, it should be also our part to become even holier in that manner. The council, where the cardinal was also very much available in contribution, says that by this holiness, a more human manner of life is fostered in an earthly society. We are people on earth, and we want to live that earthly society in the way he wished that we live. His sainthood has, should have and must have and ought to have an impact on us right from now as we celebrate the anniversary of his death. If we think of the lives of any other saints whom we are most familiar, we see them exactly as the gospel describes, the poor in spirit, the meek and the humble, the thirsting for, the, for justice, the merciful and pure of heart, the peacemakers were persecuted. What did his eminence lack in that aspect, as it's been discussed here? That is what described in the, in the Gospels. And for this reason, all of us and all of those saints, call them St. Francis of Assisi, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Ambrose, St. Charles Borromeo, St. Vincent de Paul, all of them, their life was shaped by the way, the example that Cardinal also lived for us. Let us imitate him as we pray for his canonization. Let us imitate his ideals as we pray for his canonization. And that's why I've insisted again to say his process, this process to his sainthood is an invitation of us all as by his desire, as by his work, as by his mission also to, be, to strive towards sainthood. Let us participate it at the family level, at the community level, at every, every other level that we shall find ourselves and so participating to promote him to that sainthood through which he will also promote him, promote us to be together with him in that sainthood. 
the spirit that is new also and very new. Much as it's an old tradition of the church, but very new in our faith in the church in Kenya. Let us embrace it with our hearts, embrace it as a personal process, embrace it as a, fa a process of the family, embrace it as a process even in our, in our priesthood and in everything that we do. Therefore, to summarize, I want to encourage you these two things very clearly. And it's been said already by Father Lawrence and others. The press is on. It will need our spiritual contribution. A spiritual contribution that is so genuine and so true that brings us also to where his eminence was, to pass through his paths. And second, the spirit that we want to support the process of organization. Where it has reached, we shall need a lot of support, material support from each one of you. From each one of you. Not only us who are here, but we are going to open it even out to all Kenyans and all people of goodwill that we may do what God is calling us to do. Again and again, I say again, this is for us. This is for us a call to holiness. He invites us as he goes into the holiness himself, as he's being canonized, he invites us to journey together on that path. And that's why I insist again, it is now as we start today again, let us make it a culture of call to holiness in everywhere that we are going to. I want to encourage that prayer that we have said again, that it be done personally, even individuals, and be done in our prayer places, and be done also to be said even during the masses, starting from our archdiocese of Nairobi. So with this, I want again to appreciate very much your coming and to appreciate your contribution and count on it that you are very contribution that you journey together to him, with him towards sainthood is the best gift that you can give him, that we be holy as God called us to be holy, as his eminence, the Cardinal Tunga, walked the path of holiness in the way God him to call him to be holy. We shall, our prayers will win in that manner. So may God bless you. I wish you safe journey back to your destinations and continue praying for the church, continue praying for the canonization of the church, that the process may go on successfully and with a lot of fruit the God for the fruition. Asanteni, Mungo Bariki. A hearty round of applause for His Grace. Asante kwa ujumbe wako, maususi, kwa ajili ya shukuri na hafla ya leo. Kwa rukusa inu, mundi penafasi ni wape matangazo matatu. Kwanza, nazidi kwa mshukuru Father Jude, kwa kutupa nafasi, nga waje tukwa tumepanga kuingine, lakini tukawamba tuje hapa, Kuna apostles asanteni uzidi kubarikiwa pamoja na timu yako na mapande ambao wanafanya kazi hapa. Pili ni washukuru wanakwaya kutoka DSP Mweki. Wakiwa pamoja na Father Bernard Dishu na Mwana Huku. Pamoja na Father James Kinodhia. Na pia mapadre wote kwa kuleta wa Kristu kwa shuguri hii ya leo. Pamoja na Thajiko Team, Father Bernard Kavio e, na Peter Ken hapa. Tuwapigie makofi wote wanakwaya na wakristo wote. Tatu na mwisho ni kwamba kwa ajili ya kamati andalizi na pamoja na mwashamba baskofu mkuu. Soto tumealikuwa kwa chakula cha mchana. Chakula hiki kita andaliwa kwa hall amba iko chini ya kanisa hili. Utapata na fasi ya kutramuka downstairs. E, kuna chakula kia maandaliwa. Kwa kwetu chakula cha cha mchana to shiriki pia ukarimu ambao ulithibitisha mwadhama kardinali utunga. Na mwisho pia padri mapadri na all the religious takutana kwa father's residence kwa chakula cha mchana. Kwa hivi sasa ni ombe tuweze kusema masote tumuombe mwashamba baskufu mkuu atupe baraka ya kumaliza ibada.
we shall bless you all, the three of us will bless you all after the prayers. Let us bow our heads and receive God's blessings. And the Lord be with you. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. So may we who live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead, rise again with him. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Our Eucharistic celebration is added.
was a man of great faith, poor at, in spirit, but kind at heart and filled with immense love for each and every creation of God. And it is for that reason that we are all gathered here. Uh, we gathered here today at the Queen of Apostles, Ruaraka Parish, to commemorate uh, 20 years since uh, his death. Exactly uh, six, that was Saturday, 6th of September, 2003, at the wee hours, this great man of God, servant of God, Morris Michael Cardinal Otunga, breathed his last at the Mata Misericordia Hospital in uh, Nairobi, South Bay area. And we continue to pray because we have received the good message that indeed the process is on course and there is a positive message from the Vatican Dicastery of Saints. And that gives us hope as we continue to push ahead with the prayers. Right now I am joined by a family member Mrs. Uh, uh, Cecilia Nasimiu Sitati, who happened uh, to be the first family member to go and see uh, the body of the late servant of God at the Mata Misericordia Hospital mortuary on that day, the, the morning of 6th. Uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Good afternoon. Please uh, tell us, how do you relate to the servant of God? Before you give us an insight of how it was like and how you got the message uh, of his passing on. Uh, I am one of the nieces of the cardinal. My father is the elder brother. And he actually, he grew in our home. Even uh, my mother is one of those that used to cook for him. Any time, and I remember when she was alive, she used to tell me that she remembers the uniform he put on when he was going to mom. She has never forgotten. So he's one of my closest, closest angle among so many angles in the Sud family. How did you get the message of the passing on of the servant of God, Maurice Cardinal Tunga, on that day? I had gone for the clinic at AAR in South B. And you know South B is next to Mata Hospital. Mm -hmm. And since I had been visiting him almost on a daily basis mm -hmm. in the evenings, my cousin Fred used to go there in the mornings and I used to go in the evenings with my husband every day. And uh, on that particular day, I had gone to the, to the clinic and then it got at 11, mm -hmm. but uh, you know matter with the uh, Saudi B are very close. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, we are going to come in the evening. Should I go now or I go home, then I will come with my husband in the evening. Mm -hmm. Then I drove, I started to the car, and when I go to the door, to the gate of Mata, I don't know what it turned to me, I just found I had turned the car, go entering the Mata hospital. And when I ended, of course, I knew where he was. So I majestically just walked in. I knew I was going to get him there. We were going to have a nice talk with him as always. Mm -hmm. So when I ended, I found the bed was empty. And I didn't know, you know, initially I thought he had been taken to the ICU. Mm -hmm. So I called, fortunately one of the sisters saw me and they knew me. Mm -hmm. So she cautioned me quickly and Molly told me to go to the office. So I went to their office, and when I got there, they, they did not tell me straight what had happened. They, in fact, they, were, they, they told me, Cecilia, we have seen you, you have come as usual. I said, yes. And I wanted to see my, to see my man, my uncle, where is he? Mm -hmm. Then they told me, just hold on. They kept quiet for some time. And my conscience was that there's something wrong. So eventually they broke the news. After all, before then, they started, you know, asking me how the relationship, what he has done for me all this time and so on. Then in fact I asked, but why are you asking me these questions that you have never asked me any time I come here? Mm. Then that's the time one of them told me, Cecilia, we are sorry, your angle is no more. I screamed, I screamed. In fact, I threw the hand back away, the keys that I was holding in the hand. Mm -hmm. But they left me. They left me to scream. I they screamed. Yeah, they allowed. They told me 
scream as loud as you want. So after about the five minutes, I kept quiet. My next question was, I have to see him. And then they told me, no, you cannot see him. Mm -hmm. The first person to see him is the Archbishop, Mwana mm Wanseke, -hmm. Ndingi. Unfortunately, on that day, mm -hmm. that was the time the late Wamaro was being buried. Mm -hmm. So he was in Kitale. Mm -hmm. Then I asked the sisters, you mean to tell me I'll wait for the bishop to come from Kitale to see my uncle mm -hmm. before I am allowed? They said, yeah, we are not allowed to. I said, then I'm not going away. Mm -hmm. I have to see my uncle mm -hmm. because he was the remaining father that I had. Mm -hmm. And actually they realized, since they had been seeing me, I think, every day, mm -hmm. They said, it's okay. And then they asked me, when we get to the mortuary, will you scream? I told them, no. Mm -hmm. I just want to see him. Mm -hmm. So and we went, when we got, they were holding my hand. When we got there, they opened the fridge. I saw, and when they opened the fridge and I saw him, I found I had already fallen on him and screaming. I couldn't hold him, mm -hmm. hold back. Mm -hmm. But they left me again. And after about three minutes, I stopped and then I sat down. They gave me time, about 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we left. Then when we got to the office, they asked me whether I would be able to drive home. I said, mm -hmm. yes, I will. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I didn't go, I didn't drive uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. I went out, sat for some minutes, for about uh, half an hour, mm -hmm. rested, and then I got the strength, I sat, got into the car, and I drove off home. Going now to relay the mess to give the message to my husband who was at home. Mm. So when I got home, he had already received the message because they had shown the breaking news mm -hmm. that he had passed on. So by the time I got there, he saw me. He was he knew. So he was coming to meet me to tell me what had happened. And I told him I have seen him. So actually, you can see the connection because. So far in the family, I think I was the first one to see him in the mortuary as a member of the family mm -hmm. before even the bishop came. Mm -hmm. And so I was very grateful to the sisters. And uh, as you heard what uh, George said earlier on about uh, the, the girl he drove to Tokoto, it's me. It's me he drove to, to Tokoto in that two or four Puyo. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I was admitted after one and a half years. I, I got, you know, I, I was out to become a teacher. And when I got a man who had agreed to live with me, I took him there. Mm -hmm. And when I took him there, uh, I introduced him to him. He welcomed him. You know, he was a man down into work, mm -hmm. a man that welcomed everybody, mm -hmm. a man that was so simple. And so the only thing he told my fiancé was, to make sure that he takes care of me. And that's great, all, great, great. So, so growing up as a, a, a young lady, did you have a close ties with the late servant of so God? So much, so much. I'm now coming so much. Mm -hmm. So after that, when now it was time for the wedding, mm -hmm. we, we went there the second time. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, the only gift I will give you as my daughter is I will marry you. I'm the one going to officiate your wedding. Mm. Yeah, so he told us when we go back to Holy Family mm. to tell the priests that he was the one coming to conduct the, mm. the wedding. Mm -hmm. But then when we went to the Holy Family to tell them, they said, no, he's a very busy man. He cannot come and conduct your wedding. I told him, I told them, no, he's, he will come. Then they said, mm -hmm. we are going to recall to confirm. Mm -hmm. So they had to call. They couldn't believe that he would leave the busy schedule to come and officiate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you know, I was such a symbol, you know. Mm -hmm. So after that, they called and, they, and he told them, yes, I will, I will come, there. I will be there. Mm -hmm. So on that day he came, he's the one who, this ring, mm -hmm. as he put there, I've never moved it. Mm -hmm. The one who put it there, it, still it is still there. How the many man. years down the line? 51 years ago. Wow. That was in 1972, mm -hmm. April 15th. Mm -hmm. That's when I got married. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, as I stay, started now teaching, and I got the family. I used to go there with the children. In fact, they were very close. You, you know, used to give them, you know, 
and any follow-up as the priest was saying here with me, used to give me this, with us, so rosaries and all that. And when they grew up and they went, they are out of the country, and now three of them, he used to send them Christmas cards every end of year until he passed on. Mm -hmm. And so this is a man that we are, as a family, it's a man we thank God to have had him in our family. We thank God that we have had him in the nation as the leader of our Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And we pray that we, the God is going to hear our prayers, our novenas that we are going to say in this, this prayer. Mm -hmm. And God is going to make our nation great through this, this man. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say that only our family. No, it is not only. And you look at the people who are in this church. How many of us came from Bungoma? We are not many. And uh, you know, the church was filled up. Filled up with who? Christian community. Mm -hmm. So it is not only for the family. It is for the Christian community. It's for the, our nation. It's, it will be our pride. If we ever will be mentioned as saying, and we shall continue to pray. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sitati Nasimiu. And indeed, the servant of God, Maurice Michael, Cardinal Tunga, was a, a global figure, as the vice postulator, Reverend Father uh, Professor Njoroge, puts it, or rather put it uh, some uh, time back during our discourse with him. And uh, of course, uh, so we end uh, this uh, day being uh, the day of the commemoration. It has been a great day, and we appreciate that each and every one uh, their contribution and as we heard from our shepherd is Grace Filipanyolo is that uh, everything be begins actually with you we have lays who have uh, even risen uh, to through the ranks of the Catholic Church uh, to become saints and that does not uh, exclude you but uh, one thing remains it all narrows down on how you live and interact with the people and if we are all of us to emulate the servant of God Morris Michael Cardinal Tunga then definitely the pathway will be so clear towards uh, uh, the sainthood and as we all continue to uh, uh, join efforts our concerted efforts uh, to pray uh, for the intercession of the servant of god maurice cardinal tunga and of course uh, the entire beatification process and canonization we also dedicate the family that he put at heart uh, uh, over or, or or rather to forth to be fortified and strengthened and we pray for those especially with intentions in their families their maki families uh, that they may find a uh, peace and uh, fulfillment through the intercession of the servant of god so i wish to uh, pass my gratitude to the team that has been working behind the scenes as usual i'm never alone there is a, a committed and a formidable team uh, starting with the camera operators uh, alan nandiva we had marathon charles and uh, Anthony Simiu, and then we had also on the technical part, uh, uh, that is sound, the, the uh, person manning sound, that was Frederico Ching, and we also had uh, James Nganga on the visual mixing. This all cannot be complete without the efforts affixed by the team back at our headquarters in Karen. So Kevin Kitavi and Peter Mwangi, thank you very much for your efforts towards making this day successful. My name is Sasha Elizabeth and as usual, we continue to bring you discourses about the journey to sainthood, the life and times of the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga, every Thursday at 11 a.m. And tomorrow we are on, we will be speaking to his nephew and one of the extended family members. So see you next time. Call me Sasha Elizabeth. Goodbye. Capuchin TV. And forward ever, backward never. So move ahead. Ahead, ahead. Endelea kutazama Kapuchin TV. Kitambulisho katoliki. Una persona sin techo que muere en la calle nunca va a aparecer en la primera página de los buscadores de Internet o de los noticieros. ¿Cómo hemos podido llegar a este nivel de indiferencia?
¿Cómo dejamos que la cultura del descarte, en la que millones de hombres y mujeres no valen nada frente a los beneficios económicos, cómo dejamos que esta cultura domine nuestras vidas, nuestras ciudades, nuestro modo de vivir? Se nos va a endurecer el cuello de tanto mirar al otro lado para no ver esta situación. Por favor, dejemos de hacer invisibles a los que están al margen de la sociedad. Ya sea por motivos de pobreza, de independencia, enfermedades psíquicas o minusvalía. Centremos en la acogida, en acoger a todas las personas que nos necesitan. La cultura de la acogida, de recibir, de dar techo, de dar hogar, de dar amor, de dar calidez humana. Oremos para que las personas que viven al margen de la sociedad, en condiciones de vida infrahumanas, no sean olvidadas por las instituciones y nunca sean descartadas. Vichachi in Mongolia. The East Asian nation the Pope has chosen to visit during his 43rd apostolic journey abroad is the second largest landlocked country in the world after Kazakhstan. Its tiny, traditionally nomadic population counts less than 3.5 million people, less than 2% are Christians. After 70 years of communist regime, a satellite nation of the USSR, Mongolia underwent a peaceful revolution in the year 1990 and established a multi-party democracy. It adopted a new constitution that guarantees religious freedom. That's when the Catholic missionaries who had been exiled during the years of communism came back into the country with the task of rebuilding the church from scratch. Today, there are no more than eight parishes and about 1,500 baptized Catholics. But they are also welcome and integrated and appreciated by authorities and by the people, also thanks to many social health care and educational programs they run for the poor, the elderly, the disabled, and the abandoned. The young church is headed by the College of Cardinals' youngest cardinal, Giorgio Marengo, whom Pope Francis elevated to cardinal during the consistory in August 2022. Dear friends, my brothers and sisters, and all people of goodwill, peace be with you all. My name is Father Arnold Ishirima, the superior of the Capuchins in Kenya. On 5th October 2023, the Capuchins will have our annual family day and a fundraising to be held at St. Jude's Chapel Rafter Road, Westlands, Nairobi. The Holy Mass will begin at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, followed by opening of the Year of the Golden Jubilee and the fundraising. The fundraising is aimed at raising funds to continue building the residential home for the Capuchins in our headquarters at Rafter Road, Westlands, Nairobi. The project cost is Kenya shillings 18 million. Once again, we kindly request for your generous support. You are also welcome to join us in this function. You can send your generous financial support to pay bill number 
7062124. Accounts name, put your name. May God bless you all and your family members in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebrations will be live on Capuchin TV and its social media platforms. Capuchin TV, your staunchly Catholic identity channel. I am Sister Elizabeth Onota. I belong to the Congregation of the Missionary Sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. And I'm currently serving as the program coordinator of the Leaders Guild, which is a leadership development um, initiative under the Center for Leadership and Management, Tangaza University College. TLG came into existence in the year 20. 13 on 8th December. Since then, TLG has, um, in different occasions and with different population, engaged in leadership development activities ranging from um, workshops, training, conferences, all on leadership development to help people uh, maximize their personal and professional um, potential. It's a delight to invite you to our youth conference 2023 with the theme Ethical Society Value Driven Citizens. The date will be on 16th September and the venue will be Tangaza University College. So in our conference this year we are looking at ethical society value driven citizens. How can the citizens themselves curb those vices because if we begin from the society, we would eventually address the problem on top as opposed to vice versa. So we want a healthy society. A healthy society can produce healthy leaders. And as we look towards having an ethical society, remember you are the youth, you are the future. So register and be part of this conference as we look forward to an ethical society. Karibuni sana even as you plan to attend. I pia nwa shukuru tena kwa support unapatia Caption TV. Either support to Napatia. Caption TV. Ni muhimu sana. Kwa sababu, kazi wanafanya ya kuhubili njini kote. Mimi siwezi. Ata wewe. Kwa sababu na ujuzi. Lakini hao, kwa kuwasa idea, tunafanya hiyo kazi. Tuendele kufanya kazi. Pebel number 5106789. Account name Caps TV. I am Bishop Joseph Mongela, Catholic Dazo of Kitui and the chairman of the pastoral and lay apostolate in the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops. 
I invite you and welcome you warmly to our national prayer day to be held at Subukia National Shrine. The theme for this year is journeying together as a reconciled family. We shall be led by the Metropolitan of Nairobi to come and pray together for our country, for our church, for each one here in our country, to live in peace with one another, to live as brothers and sisters and to be reconciled, to heal the world so that we move together. We pray for peace, we pray for growth and accepting each other as we work together as one family. We are all welcome to come and pray together, asking God to hear our prayers and heal our country and make us live as brothers and sisters. God bless you. Season. Neymar, Ronaldo, and Benzema are set to bring the excitement of the game to your home every week. Star Times is the home of the Saudi Pro League, the Bundesliga League, the Brazilian Serie A, the Copa Italia, the Spanish Copa del Rey, and lots of other global sporting events. Rediscover the thrill and excitement of live sports every day. Buy the Star Times aerial decoder at 1,199 shillings and enjoy the classic bouquet for one month free. Or buy the Star Times dish decoder for 2,999 shillings and enjoy Super Bouquet for one month free. Recharge your monthly subscription and enjoy the thrill of the exciting soccer leagues from the comfort of your home. Get your Star Times decoder at Star Times business halls or dealer shops countrywide. Star Times, enjoy digital life. Are you a devoted Catholic searching for high quality religious items? Look no further than Consolata Nairobi Procure located in Westlands. Our shop is fully stocked with items made both locally and internationally, including a variety of rosaries, candles in various colors and sizes, chalices from Italian, Indian, and local manufacturers, bells, gold crosses, and Italian-made candle holders in all sizes and designs. We also carry the most up-to-date religious statues molded by the best artists from across the world, depicting saints, the mother of Christ, Joseph, and the body of Christ. These statues come in sizes suitable for your home, church, or any other place of worship. Our body of Christ statues are expertly crafted for quality and are available in various sizes with custom orders accepted. Clergy members will find our selection of clerical shirts, vestments, tabernacles, prayer books and other accessories perfect for their needs. Don't waste time searching Google when you can find everything you need at Consolata Nairobi Procure. Visit our shops today in Nairobi, Meru and Sagana or you can call us at 0791297677. 77 to get the best Catholic products at affordable prices. Consolata Catholic Bookshop and Procure. We care for your spiritual needs. Mass, we, we pray for Eric Primo Kibaral to rest in peace. We are also praying for the servant of God, Maurice Cardinal Tunga, as we mark his 20th anniversary. Together with other intentions that we have in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and not have failed. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and to my brothers and sisters. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ at Colossia, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ, Jesus and of the love which you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel which has come to you, and indeed the whole world, it is bearing fruit and growing. So among yourselves, from the day you heard and understood the grace of God in truth, as you learnt it from Ephraim, our beloved Pharaoh's servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust in the mercy of, the, of God forever and ever. The mercy of God forever. I am like a growing olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust the mercy of God forever. I will thank you forevermore, for this is your doing. I will hope in your name, for it is good, in the presence of your faithful. I trust in the name. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust in the mercy of God forever. A gospel acclamation. Send me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they asked him about her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and served them. Now, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. 
And he said, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a lonely place. And the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10b. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is precisely what we see Jesus doing in the Gospel today. We have heard of how people brought to him people who are suffering and those who are possessed just to be healed by him. It is for this reason that he came. Jesus heals the brokenhearted. He heals and wounds the, the wounded. He binds the wounded. As we can hear this in Psalms 147, verse 3. He came to heal the brokenhearted and binds the wounds. I have a question. Are you broken? Are you wounded? We have Jesus to run to. Look at this. All who approached Jesus with their various needs, they were healed. Some did not even know him. They were just brought by those who knew of their conditions. And to some of them, like Peter, he is the one who took Jesus to those who are suffering. Are you bringing those who are suffering to Jesus? Or you are being brought? God is good. Those possessed were cleansed. And those who are sick were healed. What is this that is troubling you? Have you tried out Jesus? Is it an illness that weighs you down? Just seek him out. Just seek the healing of Jesus. This Jesus who healed these men and women at his own time, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We only need to give him opportunity to heal us, to work in our lives. And what surprises me, it was just on Monday that we heard the people of Nazareth, they rejected him. They did not accord him time to work on them, to heal them, to show them the face of God. But this did not limit Christ to go to other regions that would accept him as well. And I was, I was just reflecting this morning, and I thought about it. It was just on Monday, the gospel mentioned of Jesus being rejected in Nazareth. And here comes people who are coming him, people who are cordial to him. If you are you, I think you would have even wished to remain where you are celebrated. It is a human aspect to rejoice and be happy where you are welcomed. But here is Jesus telling them, I must also go to other regions as well, for this I came. He was not carried away by the fact that people are welcoming him. If you are, if you are Jesus, you'd have opted to remain where you are celebrated. We always want to go where we are celebrated. We are blessed than those people. Because today, Jesus is not limited by place and time that we have to beg him to stay with us. He's always with us, staying with us at all times. Have you tried reaching out to him? And like that time, as I've mentioned, is not limited to time and place and space. He's always here with us. As Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 will say, I am with you till the end of time. The gospel informs us of how people tried to beg him, stay with us. The more they stayed with the Lord, the more their lives were transformed. The more we stay with Jesus, 
the more our lives become transformed. They could not have enough of him. Why? Because Christ won their attention. And this leads us to the question, has Jesus gotten your complete attention? Have you given your all to Jesus? These men and women gave their attention to Jesus. The people of Capernaum wanted to make Jesus to stay with them. Is this not what you want? To spend more time with him? To be with him and transform your life? This reminds me of the two disciples who are heading to a mouse. When they encountered Christ, they begged him to stay with them. Stay with us, Lord, for evening is drawing near. They sought to have him, to stay with him. Many of those who encountered Jesus in various ways could not help but to beg him to stay with them. A good example is what we have heard in our gospel, the mother-in-law. Even after being healed, we have heard that she rose and attended to them. And we know what mother-in-laws can be. Good people, loving God, loving their daughters-in-law. These are the mother-in-laws, if you have watched the program of mother-in-laws. But after she met Christ, she rose and attended them. Think of those who are possessed. They met Jesus, and they were never the same again. The tendency of keeping Jesus near and dear is not new in this gospel. It is also not unexpected. Think of Magdalene, a prostitute, from whom the Lord delivered seven demons. When he encountered the Lord, he wanted to remain with him all the more. The more we stay with Jesus, the more we want to spend more time with him. Think of the 12 disciples. They were called by Jesus and suddenly they left everything they had just to spend time with him. Is this what you are looking for? Think of the few hours the thief at the cross encountered Christ. He could not help but beg him, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This is what happens to those who encounter Christ. And I want to believe this is what made you to leave the comfort of your rooms to come and be with him. We can enumerate a number of, a number of encounters with the Lord. I don't know whether you have another encounter with the Lord. Of those who encountered Christ and wanted to remain with him all the more. Do you have an example of another person? God is good. Do you have an example of another person who when he encountered Christ, he could not help but remain with Jesus all the more? Do you have an example? Look at this. You are that example. The more you stay with Jesus, the more you will need him all the more. And this is perhaps why Psalms 34 verse 9 and the following say, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Do you need another example? Of those who met Christ and wanted all the more to spend time with him? You are that example. Hymn number 505, 505, page 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and the glory of his name. The good of God. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it is celebrated in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though you have no need of our praise, Yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Son and the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Agnolo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Eric Kiprimo Kibaral, and your servant, Maurice Cardinal Tunga, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptations, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to eternal life.
Hymn number 523, 523 on page 264. Tende <speaking in Hebrew> Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked, for defend me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come unto thee that with thy angels and saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stars to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord.
prayer for the beatification of the servant of God. O God, you granted your servant Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga the grace to be an exemplary pastor at the service of the church, making him a symbol of humility and love for the poor and less fortunate in the society, while denying and detaching himself from the pleasures of the world. Grant, we beseech you, that we may also learn to respond faithfully to the demands of the Christian vocation, converting all moments and circumstances of our life into opportunities of loving you and our neighbors with joy and kindness and of serving the kingdom of God with humility. We humbly request you to grant your servant Cardinal Tunga a share in the glory of heaven, which is promised to those who have served you well. Through his intercession, bless the church, our country, our families, our children, and grant us the favors we humbly request through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Have a blessed day. Hymn number 532, 532, page 267. Tunakushu kurumama Maria Konema unazotu jali Asante, asante mama wa Yesu Una persona sin techo que muere en la calle nunca va a aparecer en la primera página de los buscadores de Internet o de los noticieros. ¿Cómo hemos podido llegar a este nivel de indiferencia? ¿Cómo dejamos que la cultura del descarte, en la que millones de hombres y mujeres no valen nada frente a los beneficios económicos, ¿Cómo dejamos que esta cultura domine nuestras vidas, nuestras ciudades, nuestro modo de vivir? Se nos va a endurecer el cuello de tanto mirar al otro lado para no ver esta situación. Por favor, dejemos de hacer invisibles a los que están al margen de la sociedad. Ya sea por motivos de pobreza, de independencia, enfermedades psíquicas o minusvalías. Centremos en la acogida en acoger a todas las personas que nos necesitan. La cultura de la acogida, de recibir, de dar techo, de dar hogar, de dar 
amor, de dar calidez humana. Oremos para que las personas que viven al margen de la sociedad, en condiciones de vida infrahumanas, no sean olvidadas por las instituciones y nunca sean descartadas. friends, my brothers and sisters, and all people of goodwill. Peace be with you all. My name is Father Arnold Ishirima, the superior of the Capuchins in Kenya. On 5th October 2023, the Capuchins will have our annual family day and a fundraising to be held at St. Jude's Chapel, Rafter Road, Westlands, Nairobi. The Holy Mass will begin at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, followed by opening of the year of the Golden Jubilee and the fundraising. The fundraising is aimed at raising funds to continue building the residential home for the Capuchins in our headquarters at Rafter Road, Westlands, Nairobi. The project cost is Kenya shillings 18 million. Once again, we kindly request for your generous support. You are also welcome to join us in this function. You can send your generous financial support to pay bill number 7062124. Account's name, put your name. May God bless you all and your family members in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebrations will be live on Capuchin TV and its social media platforms. Capuchin TV, your staunchly Catholic identity channel. For close to 40 years, the Catholic University of Eastern Africa has stood out as a regional hub for creating success stories. At Quare, we are known for developing lifelong skills, shaping destinies, and forming innovative and transformative leaders for the industry and the society. Ours. Student experience in a rich multicultural environment to empower dreams for the future. Welcome to the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Nini Cottage Mission Hospital is a medical center of choice. The hospital offers 24-hour profound and holistic outpatient and inpatient services. 
We are equipped with modern medical facilities. Our services are patient-centered, delivered by friendly and compassionate staff. We are a NHIF accredited and we also accept covers from major insurance providers and schemes. We also have MediClaim cover which covers AON for the teachers and the CIC for both Kenya Prison Police Service and the National Police Service. Our ambulance services are available round the clock. Visit Kiminini Cottage Mission Hospital today. We are strategically located at Kiminini Town of Kitale Webuye Highway. For more information, contact us on 0723-644-555 or email us on kimininihospital at yahoo.co.uk or visit our website at www.kimininicottagehospital.com. Kiminini Cottage Mission Hospital. We treat God heals. Ready for a tasteful and memorable guest experience? Choose the exclusive Radix Hotel for an ideal place to stay and enjoy hospitality at its best. We are a hotel of its own kind. We are a hotel that uh, lead it trucks in morals and uh, the upbringing and the teaching of the church. We exemplify compassion in the hospitality industry through our top-notch accommodation and recreational facilities amplified by modern aesthetics. We are also a family-based oriented uh, uh, hotel whereby we support the morals and values of family who have got uh, that uh, abundance of uh, uh, smiley face and uh, goodness and we spread happiness to people by offering our services with that touch of uh, smile. The Radix Hotel guarantees you homely comfort and good taste with a variety of hotel services and facilities that are cut out for your budget and preference. The reason why we call ourselves a home away from home is because of the calmness that we offer to the facilities that we have allowed here. Our services include spacious affordable accommodation rooms, a restaurant with an assortment of delicious cuisines, fully-fledged conference halls, open grounds with manicured lawns for outdoor events, clean swimming area, and a well-organized chapel for spiritual reflection. We also do offer food and restaurant services, uh, outside catering services, events and banquets, eh? and also we have some grounds whereby we host uh, corporate events and team building activities. We've got uh, 198 rooms, the conference halls, to host various events and uh, trainings, workshops and seminars. Be our guest today and experience the warmth and service of Christian hospitality. Uh, our menu is a broad, it covers broad spectrum. We cover both local food, uh, we cover uh, oriental food as well as continental food. So everybody who comes here at the Radix is well catered for. Last time when I was here, I had the pumpkin soup and it looked wonderful. It was so tasty. The Radix was still over. It's a very wonderful service. We are located in Karen, Nairobi, off Langata South Road, next to Apostle of Jesus Shrine. We have the surrounding of uh, the most iconic places surrounding us. We just uh, two kilometers away from the iconic Nairobi National Park. We also have also some other various interesting sightseeing uh, alongside surrounding us. We have the Mati Bros at Gallery, just some few meters away from us. We also have the famous current bricks and uh, museum 
located uh, also uh, within a, a distance from us. We also have the famous uh, research centre, International for Climate Research Institute, IPR, also located within a uh, walking distance from where we are located. When you reside in or board in with us, you need a well catered for as you can uh, walk along in uh, one of uh, our main shopping malls, like the Galeria Shopping Mall, the Well Shopping Mall. And we also have a, a petrol station just within the, the vicinity of our hotel. Call our office at 0708-990451 or 0105-020-760 or 0794-897277. For inquiries and bookings. You can also write to us via email to reception at the ladixhotel.co.ke or at the reception the ladix at gmail.com or at info the ladixhotel.co.ke. For updates about our services, offers, and special banqueting, follow us on Facebook at the Radix Hotel. Twitter handle at the underscore radix underscore hotel and Instagram at underscore radix dot Nairobi. Welcome to the Radix Hotel. You are home away from home. Karibun. The Radix Hotel, a true definition of your home away from home.